Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Today we're talking about crowdfunding, what I think is one of the most exciting subjects in commercial real estate. Please welcome my next guest is David Kessler. He's National Director of Real Estate Industry Practice at Cone Resnick. David, thanks for joining us on Skype today. Hey, Michael. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And David, you are working with a lot of different entities around the country, including some of these crowdfunding companies. So how are these crowdfunding companies uh, companies evolving today, especially when it comes to commercial real estate? Uh, that's a great question. You know, I think it's fascinating um, seeing what's happening within the commercial real estate space with the crowdfunding platforms. Uh, when they first came about, the crowdfunders were typically a technology based format that would provide opportunities for individual investors as well as institutions, but primarily individual investors with uh, investment opportunities within commercial real estate. And it could be anything from a retail site, an apartment building, um, a, a small office building. And typically the raises were anywhere from you know one to, to $3 million. And it would provide access to the you know, regular um, everyday people into direct real estate investments and we're seeing a lot of activity with um, both sponsors and investors connect through this platform and are these all these uh, opportunities for investors to invest in these deals are they all property specific or are some of them more uh, discretionary fund based well that's that's an interesting question and it started out property specific. So you or I could um, be sponsors. Let's say we found a, um, a retail site. We're going to uh, redevelop it, retenant it, and we're looking for you know a million dollars of, uh, of capital. We would post our uh, um, uh, uh, documents, our background, our history on a crowdfunding site. We'd enter into an agreement with them. Uh, they would take a fee and we would get access to investors directly. And the interesting thing is of um, uh, 10 or 30 or 40 different real estate deals on the site, I as an investor can log in, look, um, you know, I happen to like this particular city, this location, I may live there near there, I may have relatives near there, I like the deal. I like what I see in the sponsors, and I could request more information directly from them. So I'm dealing directly with somebody who's a sponsor of a real estate project. And um, what's happened now is the crowdfunding groups have launched Reg A Plus Tier 1 or 2 offerings, and they're raising discretionary funds up to a $50 million uh, ceiling under the Reg A Plus um, uh, environment and that you know allows them to invest in deals and allows investors to invest in a, in a, in a broad pool of deals so not necessarily one particular uh, real estate deal okay so now the investors banking on on that sponsor on that fund and it's totally discretionary so there's really no particular project for them to check out right yeah, in that case, there's no particular project because you're relying on the um, the sponsor of the fund, which is the uh, crowdfunding group, to uh, pick the deals that fit. And you know, within the PPM of the fund, there's criteria and there's um, uh, ceilings and caps and concentrations. Uh, you know, so not all 50 million is going to go in one deal. Some of them are split hybrid. Um, with loan investments as well as equity investments, and some are just specifically equity investments or loan investments. All right. Well, let's talk about timing there. If I'm an investor investing online in crowdfunding, I'm going into a fund, then there's not really a, a time that property is, is refinanced or sold that I'd get my equity back. So uh, talk to us about liquidity in these types of deals. Yeah, a little bit different um, on li the liquidity side. Um, a lot of the funds have um, redemption rights similar to an open-end fund um, however there's restrictions tied to the redemptions 
um, over certain time periods uh, and certain concentrations relative to the total value of the fund. So there can't be a run on the bank um, uh, as a for instance. So there's there are liquidity uh, provisions, but um, it's not 100 uh, percent liquid as you would you know find in um, an open end fund or. Um, you know, through investing in a mutual fund or, or CDs. But the interesting thing is there's not a lot of places to generate the types of returns that income-producing real estate properties can provide. And now there's opportunities. So if I'm an investor, um, I'm young, I've got a little bit of money saved, um, I'm going to go into a, a stock index fund or mutual fund or, you know, at the, at the highest liquidity you know, a um, 0.9% CD, now I'm provided with an opportunity for um, an 8% preferred return, current pay with uh, an upside that could be, a, you know, 15 or 18 IRR. So it's a little more appealing. Yeah, I, I'm a student of commercial real estate and I guess uh, a fan uh, being host of the commercial real estate show. So it's good to, to see these portals where individual investors with small amounts of money can invest. And we're going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to talk to David Kessler again. We're going to talk to him about can you 1031 in or out of these properties? That's one of the benefits of investing in commercial real estate severally at least is that in a lot of cases you can do a 1031 and defer the taxes on the gain. Can you do that? One of the other benefits of commercial real estate is the depreciation, right? The write down of the interest and the depreciation of the property can shelter some income. So we're going to ask David these questions after this short break. So stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll have more on crowdfunding right after this break. Thanks for being with us. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty, Asset and Occupancy Solutions. Excelligent, building data everywhere. Valuate, easily share what-if analysis with colleagues online. And First Service Solutions, your CMBS borrower advocate. For more information on how these businesses may be of service to you, visit CREshow.com. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Today, we're talking about crowdfunding. We have David Kessel with us. He's the National Director of Real Estate Industry Practice with the accounting firm of Cohn Resnick. He's joining us on Skype. And David, one of the benefits to investing in commercial real estate is the, the possibility of using the 1031 exchange to defer taxes, to reinvest into other properties, and, and create uh, a lot of benefits there. Is there any way that investors investing in crowdfunding can 1031 in or out of those deals? Yeah, Michael, it's uh, most likely not a situation that would work for a 1031 exchange since the investment most likely would be in a partnership interest or an LLC interest. And those interests aren't qualifying under 1031 as exchange property. Uh, so it probably would not work. The best thing for a 1031 would most likely be um, a Delaware statutory trust known as a DST or, or take interest, uh, absent owning the whole property and uh, exchanging it for another property. Okay. And what about the tax benefits of owning commercial real estate? That's obviously another benefit to be able to depreciate the improvements and to write up the interest on the on the mortgages. Do, if you're an investor online in crowdfunding, whether it's a property specific uh, investment or a kind of a discretionary, more open fund, do you as an investor get some of those tax benefits? Um, that's a great question. With a uh, direct investment in the real estate property, such as um, a, a, an investment in um, an apartment building, a retail building, an office building, the investor would get their pro rata share of the depreciation. Uh, for residential, it's 27 and a half years. Commercial properties, 39 years. And in 
every property, there's some component of personal property, which is five, seven, or 15 years. And that would be allocated to the investor on their K-1, and they would be able to benefit from the uh, depreciation deductions. In an open-end fund setting, uh, it could be a little different depending upon the structure of the fund where it's, um, if it's a debt investment, uh, most likely you're not uh, getting the depreciation uh, adjustment and you're going to be receiving a um, 1099 um, uh, income uh, from interest uh, attribution. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And before we let you go, I can't escape this question when I have the National Director of Real Estate for Cone Resnick. Is, is there any specific things a sponsor or an investor should consider uh, related to accounting when they're setting up their entities to, to do these crowdfunding deals? Um, you know, from a, the standpoint of the, of the sponsor, you know, I think you want to have an LLC um, is probably the best solution uh, when you're setting this up. From the standpoint uh, of an investor, um, most likely you're going to be receiving um, a K-1. And the one thing to look out for is what your personal situation is uh, because of depreciation and some of the other attributes from the investment. It's quite possible that you're going to be in alternative minimum tax or have some of the depreciation deductions disallowed depending upon your personal situation and the basis in the property. So you want to get a tax advisor involved in understanding whether you can utilize those deductions. Okay. So it may be better off going in it personally or maybe setting up a specific entity and you just got to look at your own personal situation. Well, David, thanks for joining us on Skype today. We appreciate you being on the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you out there for checking out our show on YouTube, iTunes, the show website, or maybe you're listening on one of the radio stations around the country. We appreciate you being with us. If you'd like to know more about crowdfunding, we'll have some links on the show website at CREshow.com. And please join us next week. We're going to have a show called Associations That Matter. We'll have some associations like ICSC and CCIM talking about the benefits and how they can benefit you as a commercial real estate practitioner. Till next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh and join us for the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty, Asset and Occupancy Solutions. Excelligent, building data everywhere. Valuate, Easily share what-if analysis with colleagues online. And First Service Solutions, your CMBS borrower advocate. For more information on how these businesses may be of service to you, visit CREshow.com.